Coming up, if you don't live in a major metro area, you might want to pack your bags. Years ago, moving to the suburbs was a sign that you were making a better life for yourself and your family. But our next guest details a government report suggesting there may be a long-term plan to change all that for you. The effort to, quote, Manhattanize America. Next. Plus. Well, if you live in the suburbs, don't get too comfy. Our next guest says the Obama administration has plans to push Americans, slowly but surely, out of the burbs and into the big cities as a means to, quote, spread the wealth around. Joining us now is Stanley Kurtz. He's author of Spreading the Wealth, How Obama is Robbing the Suburbs to Pay for the City. And this isn't based on your book, this claim. This is based on something you actually saw President Obama and the administration do last week. Explain, Stan. Well, that's right, Megan. It looks like President Obama's plans to fight global warming are going to hurt America's suburbs. And that's because the Obama administration believes in something called smart growth. Now, the idea of smart growth policies is that you should get out of your car, don't move to the suburbs, you should live in a tiny, densely packed apartment building in the city where you would walk and take public transportation, don't drive. And that smart growth in the, uh, the Obama administration is gearing up to impose these smart growth policies on the country, and that would be bad for America's suburbs. How would they do it? How would they m make us move from the suburbs to the city? Because most of the folks who live in the suburbs like the suburbs. They don't want to live in the city. How would they make us do it? Well, there are several plans, Megan, and part of the idea is just to stop people from moving out to the suburbs in the first place. But in the end, it might, it might even get some people who are living in suburbs to head to the cities. Last week, the Energy Department released a series of reports that touted a new strategy for cutting back on carbon dioxide emissions. The idea is to make all federal funding conditional on adherence to these smart growth principles. So let's say the federal government is thinking of, of funding a new school or a new highway. Well, if this idea goes through, the government would say, let's look at the population density. If you've got a high population density, we'll give you the federal money. If you don't, you're not going to get the money. And that would start channeling new development away from the suburbs and into the cities. And if you think about it, it's actually a way of redistributing the wealth of the suburbs to the cities. This is an actual proposal that was put forward? Well, a report came out called Transportation Energy Futures, and one of these reports floated this proposal. At this stage, it's a trial balloon, I think you could say, but there's another similar proposal that, according to a news report, the Obama administration has already decided on, and that is that the Obama administration, for the first time, is going to tell every agency of the federal government to consider carbon dioxide emissions before they give environmental approval to big projects. And that could mean big delays, big challenges, maybe even the elimination of some, say, highway construction projects out into the suburbs. So if you want to have that uh, traffic congestion relieved on your suburban commute or maybe opening up a new area for suburban development with a highway, that could be delayed and, and possibly even blocked by these new regulations. And that, again, would tend to uh, channel development away from the suburbs and back to the city. Now, you talk in your, in, in your piece, which was posted on uh, National Review Online, about how, uh, yes, of course, this focuses in part, this, this initiative that's been proposed focuses in part on greenhouse gas emissions and making the environment more, more green and, you know, your carbon footprint when you live in a little 800 square foot apartment in Manhattan is much, much smaller than if you live in, uh, you know, a 3,000 square foot home in the burbs. So that's that's clear. That, that could be one of the goals. But you also say that this is about uh, wealth redistribution on a grand scale. How so? How, how is it a redistribution of wealth? Well, that's what I talk about in the book, Megan. If you go back to Obama's whole political history, people don't realize it, but he's been a big backer of this, a movement called regionalism. The whole idea of regionalism is that there's something fundamentally unfair about the very existence of suburbs, because when people move out to suburbs, they take their tax money with them. And President Obama and some of the people he used to work with in his political career believed that that was somehow unfair to the cities. So if you put in these smart growth policies and you say it's all about carbon dioxide and global warming, you still are channeling all that federal money, which comes from all of our taxes, after all, into the cities and the, away from the suburbs. And that's a way of redistributing wealth from the suburbs to the cities. And in the minds of these advocates of regionalism that Obama has always worked with, this is a way of redistributing money 
back away from the suburbs and into the cities. But you still, I mean, you still have the same crop of people. So if, if, if you're forcing folks who live in the suburbs to eventually move back into the city or people who live in the city not to move out to the suburbs, it's still the same people. You're not going to change their political worldview. You're not going to change their voting habits necessarily. Well, some people think it might change voting habits. It's unclear whether that will really happen. But the point for these regionalists is that you're stopping tax money from being taken away from the cities and put into the suburbs. These regionalists think that there's something fundamentally unfair about that. So what they first want to do is get taxpayers back to the cities so that their money can go into the coffers of those city mm. governments and not the suburban governments. And maybe the politics will take care of itself after that. You call it an effort to Manhattanize America. And uh, a lot of our viewers won't like the thought of that since there's a reason they've chosen not to live in Manhattan. And it's not just the, you know, lock jam traffic at rush hour and the taxi cabs and the pollution and all that. Sorry, Mayor Bloomberg, but you know what I'm talking about. And they don't necessarily want Iowa to, to look like Manhattan. But in any event, Stanley, very interesting hearing your perspective. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Megan.